Hello and welcome to this free immigration channel. Today we're going to talk about immigration attorneys. I often mention attorneys, uh, some situations where they are recommended, some situations where they're not really necessary. So we're going to talk about all of these different situations when I do recommend having an immigration attorney and if you really do need an immigration attorney in general and if you do if 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 in your case attorney is recommended how to find a good attorney and what things to keep in mind so these are the things that we're going to talk about in this video so let's get into it so number one thing that i wanted to mention before we get any further number one thing to remember is you do not ever need an immigration attorney but there are situations at cases where having an attorney is recommended. So you don't really need an attorney. There is no circumstance where you must have an attorney. Whatever the situation is, you can choose to be by yourself, to handle the case by yourself, to represent yourself if necessary in the court. Uh, so there is no situation where you have to have an attorney. Just keep that in mind. All right, so let's get into the situations when attorney is recommended. Number one, when the case went to court, let's say, for example, you have an immigration case, let's say it's an asylum case, and it was denied by the immigration. So now you are in the removal proceedings, right? You're scheduled for deportation. So you are filing your case now to court and to, for the judicial branch to review your case uh, kind of the second time, kind of like another review, but by the judicial branch. And obviously you have to appear in court. There will be several different trials. There will be master trial. Uh, there will be the final hearing. So all of these different hearings, you have to appear there. And obviously attorney is recommended whenever it comes to court not as much that the attorney will have that power to change the outcome it's not up to attorney it's up to the judge and the person sitting there uh sort of the opposite side right against you will be the uscis officer a representative from uscis asking you questions and you know it's very similar to an interview only in front of the judge so attorney is really not gonna do a lot but here's the thing whenever it comes to all of these hearings most of these hearings before the final hearing whenever final hearing is gonna be just you your attorney if you have one the opposition interpreter if you need one and the judge and maybe the court clerk most likely the court clerk but before that all of these hearings before that they will be packed with other people, with other immigrants who are doing all of their different cases. And here is the problem, number one problem that I've seen. People without the attorneys usually have to wait till the very last order in line. So they hear all of the people with attorneys first before they get to you if you do not have an attorney. And that can be, it can be, it can take really long time. Sometimes I, I've seen people waiting two, three hours while the judge calls everyone with attorney and the, the circumstances really don't matter that's it uh so that's one of one of the main things okay uh let's get to the next one you are not willing or able to research and understand immigration process i always recommend taking responsibility and learning what you're doing knowing how everything works and what is the process like but if there is no way you can do it, if there is absolutely no way, maybe you just don't understand and you just need the guidance, attorney definitely is recommended because a good, knowledgeable attorney with good heart, you know, not, not, not somebody who just wants to make money, but with somebody with, who wants to help people will be able to walk you through the process and explain things to you. And it's very important. You can afford hiring an attorney. Now, here's the thing with this one. Uh, you are obviously hiring someone, right? You're hiring help, a service. You're, you're buying a service. And it's the same thing as taxes. You can do the taxes yourself. You can sit down, you can do the research, and you can do taxes yourself. Or you can go and pay $500 or whatever to the CPA and have them do all the taxes for you. 
So it's like kind of like a luxury. You're hiring someone to do that. You can cut your own grass or you can hire a loan service and have them cut your grass. It's the same thing. So if you can't afford it, obviously you can get an attorney. Why not if you can't afford it? But nevertheless, just because you can afford it, still you have to make sure that you are taking responsibility for your case. You making sure that you overview all the things that your attorney is doing and he's not doing anything you know bad i'm not saying that attorney is going to intentionally do something bad but i've seen a lot of cases i cannot stress enough how many cases i've seen where attorney takes on a case forgets to file something something gets lost he receives a notice but he forgets to message it because because there is this extra person obviously whenever you are doing something of course there are unresponsible uh, you know unresponsible people but most likely if you are doing everything yourself you are paying attention to everything and if the receipt comes in you you're waiting for that receipt you want it not like an attorney because attorney has 100 other clients that he receives receipts for and he doesn't really care he all he needs to do is just forward that receipt but you get the point all right let's get to the next one the case is taking unusually long sometimes in cases immigration cases there can be delays and uh, you can check your case status typical processing time by going to USAS website USAS.gov and going to the processing times and checking out your application and checking out the office the field office where you filed your application and uh, sometimes they might not be exactly accurate you know if your case is taking one month two months three months more than the time shown on the website really not a big deal but if it's taking longer than six months longer than a year this is a little bit a little bit strange so in that situation obviously you can do a lot of things yourself you can call USAS and ask them you can file an inquiry with USAS it's fairly simple to do I will make another separate video to show you how to file that inquiry to USAS but sometimes USAS can be pretty difficult and they can sometimes agents say I've seen cases where agents say oh you know we're waiting for fingerprints from FBI and the thing is finger fingerprints from FBI they take seven days 14 days usually you know the report from FBI so it's just they they're just giving the reason to kind of get off the phone basically so in, in those situations you do want to have you know do an attorney do something and it has to be a knowledgeable attorney obviously because if you just hire someone who doesn't know much they can just file the same inquiry that you could have filed you know that's that's not the point of hiring an attorney you know you're hiring an attorney so that they can file complaint with the senator with an ombudsman with you know have their own contacts in USAS and they can contact them and check on the case that's what kind of attorney you want not just someone who will do the same thing that you can do yourself online okay okay so next next one you receive unexpected interview notices I've seen that happen to people and what I mean by that is you file for for example it's a green card application whenever you're doing a green card application typically there are no interviews involved you go to the doctor do your vaccinations do all the an analysis all of that stuff you do your biometrics you file the application to USAS that's it and then USAS processes it and then they if you're approved they tell you that you're approved and then they give you the there is no interview is not nor it's not I'm not saying it's not normal but it's not typical in green card applications unless unless it's a green card for marriage then in those situations sometimes they do schedule the interviews but if you're filing for green card based on for example asylum interviews are not typical so if you are called for the interview and it's not typical in your case I would recommend reaching out to an attorney and talking to them and asking them and see what's going on and what can be the possibility maybe you can go over with the case it doesn't mean that you have to hire an attorney you can just pay them for a few hours of consultation and have them go over your case and maybe he can or she can find some sort of 
problems in your case where they can be like okay this is this this might be the case where they're calling you for an interview and this this is the kind of questions that they might ask because this is what kind of looks weird so this is this can be helpful okay let's go to the next one you received a letter of intent to deny sometimes USAS whenever you have a case with them sometimes they don't immediately deny you but they send you a letter giving you reasons why they're planning to deny your case in those situations definitely recommended to go out and reach out to an attorney because with those intents to deny USAS gives you an opportunity to make a rebuttal and and to like for example they have questions they have some questions about your case something is not clear some evidence is not clear and they send you an intent to deny and they say so this doesn't seem reasonable this doesn't seem real this doesn't seem like that whatever and then you have an opportunity to reply to them directly to the address where they sent it from it's like a direct communication it's very rare to have a direct communication with USAS like that but sometimes they do when they are doubting should they deny you or should they not deny you they don't have a great reason to deny you but they have doubts and they cannot grant you stuff with doubts so that that's when they send it so you can prepare your rebuttal where you explain everything and if it's good enough they will approve your application and say okay so every doubt that we had he or she just explained everything so here obviously again having uh, an attorney or or making you know doing a consultation with attorney can help you because he or she can you know go through that intent of denial right intent to deny and tell you okay so you can rebuttal it like this this is what would be good this is this is what would, would work you know okay so let's move on to another one you received a denial obviously you know if your application was denied it doesn't mean this is this is the end of the road you can file most of the times uh, uh, and have the case go to court and obviously it brings us to the very first one where you have to go to court and the attorney is recommended so obviously whenever you receive a denial you want to consult with an attorney and see what is what can be the next step what else can be done okay let's talk about how to find a good attorney let's say you have one of those situations and immigration attorney is recommended in your case how do you find one how do you find a good one okay from my personal experience if you're an attorney and you're watching this this is probably gonna make you uncomfortable but that's fine I'm not doing this for you I'm doing this for people who are searching for attorney okay number one good office does not mean good attorney and I've seen that a lot most of the times attorneys they can afford a very very nice office in fact it doesn't really cost a lot of money to have a very very nice office you can go and you can pay six hundred seven hundred dollars a month which is not a lot for an office not a lot at all and you can have a very small office in a very very nice building very big very nice building somewhere in the center of the city with the conference room with the reception everything is included you just pay six hundred dollars and this small office is your space there are other offices in there and they all have one receptionist they all have one conference room so they have to book it but nevertheless whenever you go to that office it creates that appearance for you that that attorney is wow amazing he has his own reception own big nice building maybe he it looks like it's even his own floor I've seen those does not mean that they're good attorney doesn't mean at all I do not recommend attorneys that do not offer free phone consultation here's the thing if they do not offer free phone consultation there is no way for them to know what's going on in your case if you cannot talk to them how do they know what they are working with maybe they don't know the area maybe they don't maybe you have an asylum case and something happened in that asylum case and the attorney doesn't work with asylum cases why do you have to go into the office and pay money to talk to someone who is not really in you know so it, it creates questions why they cannot 
have a free phone consultation with you and answer basic questions. You know, if, if, if I was an attorney and someone called me and said, hey, my asylum case was denied, what can I do? If I don't work with asylum, I can just straight up say, hey, I'm sorry, but I do not work with asylum cases. Here are my recommendations. Here are my friends' attorneys. Call them. And even if I do work, I can say, okay, so you can do this. Do you want to do this? So we are having a consultation. We are having a conversation. Is there reason for you to hire me or not? You know, it's very important. I have to show you something before you can trust your case to me and pay me a lot of money. I have to show you something. And if I don't offer free consultations, it's honestly, it is sketchy. Because why, why not? Why can I, cannot I talk to you? And that brings us to another one. Same thing, I do not recommend attorneys that you cannot talk to directly on the phone. And I've seen that a lot. You call to the office, a receptionist, answer phone, and then you cannot talk to attorney. They say you have to schedule a consultation, which is paid. Or even if it's not paid, even if it's free, still, why, why do I have to waste my time going to an office and talking to someone I didn't even talk to? I don't even know who he is or she. You know, it, it's, it's just disrespectful to people who are trying to hire an attorney. And, and you are hiring an attorney. It's not the attorney hiring you. You are the boss. You are the, the, the person who is hiring. So it, it is you who has to have that conversation. You know? Okay, let's move on to the next one. If they cannot answer your questions over the phone, they cannot help you. So let's say there is a free phone consultation and you got to talk to them directly, but you're asking a question and they are not able to answer. Maybe they don't want to answer the question because they feel like they, they need to be paid for answering that question. Or maybe they just don't know the answer. It's kind of hard to tell, but I wouldn't risk anyway, you know? If you're asking me on this channel a question, and if, if, I, if I don't know, I'll say, I'm sorry, I don't know. Because there is really no interest involved. I just don't know and I don't know. If I know, I will answer. There's still no interest involved. I'm not getting paid from this. There's, there's no benefit for me, nothing. But for the attorney, they are getting a client. They are getting someone who pays. So it should be in their interest to be able to answer the questions. If they're not able to answer the question right now, they should be saying something like, you know what? I never saw something like that. Let me look into this. Let me do some research and I'll call you right back and I'll try to answer your question. Again, because they are trying to get a client. They are getting paid for this. It's very, very important to have someone who is willing to put in the work, not just sitting there and, you know, trying to just because they're an attorney, just because they're some certain status. Attorney is not a status. It's just a just a service area. You know, there cannot be any guarantees in immigration case. Attorneys cannot give you any guarantees. So if the attorney says, I guarantee you this results, I would stay away because it's a little bit sketchy because like I said, there are no guarantees. But at the same time, attorneys should be able to give you a reasonable breakdown of what to expect. You know, you're filing a case, what might happen, what are the next steps. So you don't want, again, somebody shady trying to kind of confuse you or be mysterious and say things like, well, I don't know, anything can happen. I mean, you're an attorney, so I, I'm not an attorney and I've seen en enough things to kind of give you a breakdown of what might happen. And if that's not the case and if something else happens, of course other things happen. You know, it's, it's like I said, there are no guarantees in immigration cases. But at the same time, we have 90% of cases that happen this way, you know. So if that's 90%, you can definitely explain those 90%. Okay. I do not recommend those who charge by the hour or want a full payment upfront or do not disclose all their charges and fees. 
and you will find a lot of attorneys like that a lot of attorneys here is the reason why whenever it comes to charging people by the hour especially in immigration cases you are not really dealing just once with a person you know it's not just one time you go to the court you went to the court you said whatever and that's it you're done okay bye I spent five hours doing that that's it you know you have an immigration attorney something happens you get a receipt you want to ask a question you call them you know that's where things start getting sketches they start charging you for your phone calls and I've seen that happen a lot and then you receive these bills that you did not expect to receive you know it's it's just unnecessary stuff it's obvious and any immigration attorney should understand that you will have questions along the way and it's not fair to charge people for their questions you know somebody calls me for two minutes and asks me hey I got this receipt asking me to go and do biometrics next week but I'm busy what should I do it only takes a minute to explain what what you should do you know I, I really how many cases do you have to have in order not to be able something really basic it's really not worth charging what are you gonna charge people for one minute or are you gonna charge one hour minimum that's where things get really sketchy and really not fair and and you don't want to be involved in this and the same goes for full payment up front you know immigration cases they can last for years you don't want to pay let's say it's ten thousand dollars that you have been charged you don't want to pay ten thousand dollars right out of right out of pocket and then have this case being dragged out for the next 10 years because because it will be dragged out why because your attorney is already paid and he doesn't care in fact all he cares about is just to do as little as possible on your case because the less he does the more he makes he already got all the money so the less work he puts in the better he did you know so you don't want that it has to be broken down it has to be a set fee so you're filing for asylum there are five people in your family and the attorney says I'm gonna do this for eight thousand dollars from the beginning to the end unless for example unless the case goes to court if the case goes to court then there will be extra two thousand dollars for example but if it doesn't it's eight thousand dollars and you will start paying initial payment is thousand dollars and then in the next three months another thousand dollars in the next three months another th for, for whatever but you get the point this is where it's even this is where it's balanced this is where it's fair and the same thing goes for those sketchy little fees because I've seen that a lot too an attorney takes the money takes the full payment or get char charges you by the hour I've seen in both cases the same way and then they try to stick in those little fees oh I had to make an international call oh I had to file FedEx this envelope somewhere twenty dollars for it you know if if you're giving me the price where you say everything included it means everything is included not you know this little fees here and there this is just silly okay do your research on Google and be careful with third party sites there are a lot of them out there they are referral sites for a reason because attorneys go there they pay those websites and then they are promoted obviously reviews over there are gonna be good obviously the outlook of the attorney is gonna be good you know so make sure you search attorney's name on Google because that's where not so good things come up you know Google reviews there can be bad reviews there can be there can be some scam reports websites where that attorney was mentioned and you do want to see them so don't just go on one third party websites and you see good reviews and that's it do your research on Google okay have a contract don't ever deal with a, an attorney without the contract and make sure to read it very very thoroughly very very carefully absolutely detailed I recommend not signing the contract right there saying okay thank you let me take it with me let me go home read it very carefully and then I'll come back and if everything is good I'll sign it 
If anything seems sketchy, call the attorney, ask them. If you don't like the way it's written, you can cross it and you can write it your way and have it signed that way. You can do that. That's why it's a contract. But do not sign something that you didn't read. Do not something that you do not agree with. Do not sign something that you do not understand. It's extremely, extremely important. Okay. Things to keep in mind. If you need to hire an attorney and you were able to find an attorney, here are the things to keep in mind. You are hiring. Well, I already mentioned that. You are the boss. You are hiring service. You, are, you need a service. You are paying money for it. You are the boss. Don't let the attorney dictate the rules. Attorney obviously is more knowledgeable, knowledgeable, should be more knowledgeable in the immigration process, in the way everything works. But it is very important for you to keep in mind that you are the boss. You know, if you are the owner of the business and you're hiring an expert in a certain field, they can come in and tell you, things that you do not know, do not understand very well, they can explain you those things and be a leader in those things. But they are not the leader of you and your company. They're not. You are. Keep that in mind. It's very important because I've seen a lot of people go to an attorney and they think that this is this is now their owner. And whatever the attorney says is that, that, that that's it. It's, it's the law. That's, that's not the case. If attorney is not performing his, her duties, you can fire them. If you're not happy with attorney, all you have to say is you're fired. And make sure that the contract that you're reading, that there is a clause that explains how that firing works. For example, you agreed with an attorney, it's the same exact, let's say, asylum case, five people, blah, 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 $8,000, and you already paid $2,000 to that attorney. The contract should say what is going to happen with money if you fire the attorney. Are the money being returned? Is only 50% of the money that you paid being returned? Is there nothing being returned at all? Or do you have to pay something extra after you fire the attorney? Very important. It has to be there and it has to be very detailed. Keep that in mind. Even with an attorney, your case is still your responsibility. And you have to keep an eye on everything. Obviously, I say it all the time. Always take responsibility. Don't just, because you have an attorney, just send it to them and, and that's it. No, it's your responsibility because it's your case. And as long as you are on top of it, everything is going to be good. Just don't shift that responsibility to anybody else. So I think this is actually it for this one. Uh, if you found this uh, video useful, please do subscribe. It would be very helpful. Uh, this channel is, as you can see, is still a new channel, still growing. Uh, if you have any questions, you can definitely let me know in the comments below. If I can answer them, I will be happy to help you. If I cannot, I can try to check and see if I can do research and answer them for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.